everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. We're here to break down this weekend's XFL slate. What's happening, Jim? Yeah, Greg, I'm feeling a lot better this week than I was last week, just because we have actual data to look at right now. And that's such a huge thing to have. I know it sounds very simple, but we know what these teams want to do. We know who's going to play. And... That's really helpful. So I am pumped for week two. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I enjoyed watching the XFL. It was a little background noise for me, but every so often you couldn't take your eyes away from it. And part of the reason well, it was Cordell Jones, who was highly thought after by the DFS community last week, highly thought after by well, everyone making the decisions in the XFL as well. And he lived up to the hype. He cost $21 this Saturday. Is Cordell Jones worth it? Yeah, I very much think he is, because when you're looking for a quarterback in Daily Fantasy, you really want them to check three boxes. You want them to be efficient, you want them to throw deep, so they can get yardage and chunks, and you want them to run. And Cardell Jones checked all those boxes, at least in week number one. He had the best adjusted yards per attempt for the entire league across week one at 10.6. He went deep 31% of the time. That's a pretty monster number. And he did run nine times, just 28 rushing yards for Cardell Jones. But the fact that he's willing to use his legs a bit definitely does bump up his DFS stock, both from a floor and a ceiling perspective. So I like all that. Uh, the Guardians defense he'll be facing in week number two did look pretty good in week one, but some of that may have been due to Tampa Bay's offense just kind of, you know, not really being all that competent. They were able to move the ball against them. So I think this is a good spot for Cardell Jones. He has everything I want for DFS and a quarterback. And Pro Football Focus said he was the number one quarterback in week one. So we'll lock him in, see what happens this time around. But I think I feel pretty good about Cardell Jones as a top quarterback on the Saturday only slate. Cardell Jones is in line to have another big game. He should be able to move on these defense, as you said. You got to like Cardell Jones here this weekend, specifically on Saturday afternoon. Let's go to the running back spot here, Jim, where Devion Smith at least did something this past weekend. It was a tough, tough first weekend for running backs around the XFL. Devion Smith at least showed up. Yeah, that's kind of all you can ask, Greg. Like you said, not a lot of running backs did a lot last week, but Davion Smith, uh, I thought looked really impressive, despite the fact that Tampa Bay offense was pretty lackluster, and now Aaron Murray is banged up, hasn't practiced on either Tuesday or Wednesday, which means Clinton Flowers could start. And Clinton Flowers would probably be a downgrade for the pass catchers here just because he may not throw as much as Murray did, but he would allow some extra rushing lanes for, Davey, lanes for Davion Smith, and I think that's pretty attractive. So Smith, $17 uh, in week number one, played 65% of the snaps for Tampa Bay. He had 16 carries and one target. Among the guys on the Saturday only slate, he is the only running back who played at least 60% of his snaps on his team in week one. So I do like that. So Davion Smith, I think the playing time should be good. The efficiency may be there given the matchup, given that Quentin Flowers could open some additional rushing lanes for him. And I think that he's just kind of one of the standout guys to the slate. I also do like Jarrell Presley. He is $17. He's on a better offense with D.C., but I think that Davion Smith at the exact same salary point at $17 makes a lot of sense and allows you to get some exposure to the Tampa Bay Seattle game without overextending yourself in the lesser of the two games for this two game slate. Just a two game slate, of course, Saturday separately, then Sunday is how we're playing it. And Davion Smith certainly is the favorite at that $17 price tag. And Gerald Presley, your guy from last week, was all right. Davion Smith's our guy here this week and a guy you got to get into your lineups on Saturday. Up next, we'll give you the wide receiver that you gotta you gotta choose. Excuse me, I'm getting a phone call. It's Joe Horn. Joe Horn's kid is the answer here this week on Fandle at wide receiver. He looked good last week in his XFL debut. Yeah, Matt McGloin was dialing up Joe Horn a plenty on the last weekend. So I think that it definitely makes a lot of sense to go to Joe Horn Jr. here because McGloin didn't look that bad. I actually thought he looked pretty good. And he went to Joe Horn a lot. Joe Horn, eight targets in week number one. Four of those were deep. And I think that's really interesting because heading into week number one, Joe Horn Jr. was not listed as a starter for this team. He had been limited in practice with a foot injury. But during the game, they went to him. Joe Horn looked pretty good in the volume that he got. So I would expect his role to potentially be a bit expanded this week. And he's just $14. He has $14 tied to pretty good quarterback who was willing to throw deep in week number one. I like that a lot. And again, this is the game I prefer on this two-game slate, is that uh, Guardians versus Defenders game. Joe Horn is in that. He is cheap. He had a good role. He lets us be nostalgic about his dad, too. So there are really no downsides here to Joe Horn Jr. Just $14, a really good way to save some salary and give you the flexibility to spend it for guys like Cardell Jones.
All right, Cardell Jones has to be in the lineup, and how do we do that? We get Joe Horn in there. He's one of Matt McGillian's favorite targets. Kevin Gilbride dialing it up for the Guardians, and that means Joe Horn should be in your lineups here this weekend. Let's move over to Sunday. Jim, give you a lot of picks for Saturday. Let's do the same for Sunday. We'll start at quarterback where P.J. Walker was seemingly the talk of the league after week one. Yeah, he was the player of the week for week number one, and I think that was fully justified. Four passing touchdowns for him, but kind of like Cardell Jones, he has other elements that you like for a quarterback in DFS. Specifically, I want my guys to throw deep, and nobody threw deep more often from a rate perspective than P.J. Walker, a 33% deep rate in week number one, 7.9 adjusted yards per attempt, efficient. He threw deep, didn't run as much as Cardell Jones, did have uh, four carries over 26 yards, so definitely some appeal there. And this is a fun game. The total for this game is 50 points. That is the highest for this weekend. So I do like P.J. Walker. I also do not mind the quarterback on the other side of this game. And Jordan Ta'amu, he's 20 bucks. He ran nine times for 77 yards in week number one as well. So if you can't get to P.J. Walker, I am very okay spending down for Jordan Ta'amu in this exact same game. But P.J. Walker looked awesome in week number one. He's thrown it deep. He's in a really attractive game. And he's got some good weapons around him. So P.J. Walker, my number one quarterback quarterback for the Sunday only slate and the guy I feel really confident in if you decide to play the four game slate too. If you're going with the combo slate, well, $23 for PJ Walker is a lot to spend, but those four touchdowns, they shine brightly here for us uh, after what he did in week one. Let's see what he can do in week two. Uh, the game should have a nice game flow, a nice pace. Uh, PJ Walker to get the job done for you on FanDuel here this weekend. Up next is our running back, Jim, and that's James Butler. He's $19 this weekend. Why do you like Butler? Yeah, I think if you were watching that Houston game, it kind of seemed like they gained confidence in James Butler as that game went along. It may have been because D'Angelo Henderson and Andre Williams got banged up during that game, and uh, D'Angelo Henderson did not practice Wednesday. Andre Williams was limited, so we could see a banged-up backfield, but James Butler also earned volume because he played pretty well in that game, and because he played well, he wound up playing 71% of the snaps. That was the most of the entire weekend. He had uh, nine carries and two targets, not a ton of volume, but being out on the field when you're tied to an offense as good as Houston's looked in week number one is something that I definitely want exposure to. I would keep an eye on D'Angelo Henderson and Andre Williams because if they don't wind up going, I think that James Butler is kind of like a lock button guy and really safe with a lot of upside at $19. If they do wind up playing, though, I think that Elijah Hood, he's $15. Uh, His team is a a home underdog, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but he's the other guy last week who played 70% of the snaps. So I think there are a couple of good running back options on Sunday. My favorite though is James Butler followed by Elijah Hood. If you want to save some salary. Again, the running backs were clearly not a focal point in week one of the XFL. So you want to find a player that's going to play the majority of snaps and obviously get the majority of carries. Hopefully James Butler's that guy. It does cost you a lot though at $19. And you're trying to get PJ Walker in there too at 23. It's not going to be easy, so you have to manipulate and find some value somewhere. Hopefully, we can tell you where in just a matter of moments. Because at the wide receiver tight end position on Sunday, you're going with LaDamian Washington. He only costs $13 on FanDuel on Sunday. The price is cheap, but why do you like him anyway? It's mostly because he's cheap. I think that you kind of let in there well, Greg, because if we are spending up for P.J. Walker and spending up for James Butler, we got to spend down somewhere. And LaDainian Washington gets us that lower salary at $13 while still using a player with a really good role on his team. Because in week number one, nobody ran more routes for St. Louis than LaDainian Washington did. He ran 32 according to Pro Football Focus. Nobody else ran more than 27. Washington is also tied to a quarterback who I thought looked really good in week number one. That's Jordan Ta'amu. Tamu didn't throw a ton, but when he did throw, he was pretty efficient. And Washington should be on the field. He had five targets in that game. That's a pretty solid number. But again, it's mostly just because the salary is so low here at $13. So he's my favorite value by far. If we're talking about uh, just this two games late, other guys you could consider in the flex if you are trying to spend down. Christian Michael, uh, the other running backs in St. Louis are super banged up. And if Matt Jones can't go, Christian Michael would be uh, interesting at $13, despite the fact that he was really bad last week. So some p- other potential value on the St. Louis team. But I really do like the Damian Washington. Again, Ta'amu looked pretty good. That gives me faith in this passing game. And Washington gets me exposure for just $13. I think that makes a lot of sense if you're trying to get spend up for all the really attractive Houston guys on this slate. Saving money is one of our favorite things to do, and at $13, you can do that with LaDamian Washington. Consider putting him in your lineups because you're going to want to put P.J. Walker in there. In order to do that, we got to save somewhere. 
Well, Damian Washington seems like that candidate. James Sonis, I appreciate the time. Enjoy the games this weekend, man. Thank you, Greg. You as well. Pretty fun sports week in between this and the Daytona 500, which we'll be talking tomorrow. So it uh, should be an awesome week. It's basically a second Super Bowl, and I could not be more excited. Isn't that amazing? Not only do we get Jim Sonnes to talk about golf this week, not only do we get Jim Sonnes to talk about the XFL this week, but tomorrow, working on a Friday, it's Jim Sonnes breaking down the Daytona 500. Jim, we are incredibly lucky to have you on tomorrow. Yeah, working a Friday is a, is a pretty tall ask. So you're getting me on a, on a good day. You're catching me in a good mood, too, because of NASCAR. So uh, that will certainly help. And the XFL just makes it all the more sweet. Sweet for Valentine's Day. I look forward to it. For Jim Sonnets, I'm Greg Sussman. Enjoy the games this weekend. We'll talk to you tomorrow as we preview the Daytona 500.